I'd like to welcome the ACS members to the American College of Surgeons Pathways to Fellowship Series. I'm Lindsay Kilgore, a breast surgical oncologist at the University of Kansas, an associate fellow member of the American College of Surgeons. The committee has developed this new fellowship pathway series to spotlight surgeon leaders who have championed the pathway to fellowship for young surgeons. The goal of the interview is to help promote the value of fellowship within the college and among its members, especially those in subspecialty fields of practice. This interview will be published in the resident and associate fellow newsletter and will be made available as a podcast accessible from the ACS website. Joining me in conducting this interview today is a medical student committee member, Quinn Losevsky. Quinn, could you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Quinn Losevsky, a medical student at the TCU and UNTHSC School of Medicine in Fort Worth, Texas, and I'm a member of the American College of Surgeons. Great, thank you for joining us. Um, I'd like to begin the interview. Let's start by having each of you tell us a little bit about yourself to include your work history and current role. Dr. Talley, would you like to start? Hi, thank you. I'd love to, and thank you for the invitation to, to speak here with you all. Uh, I'm from Tennessee and did most of my training there, uh, undergrad and, and medical school residency through the University of Tennessee system, and did my fellowship at Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt University, went on to practice at University of Kentucky uh, as a trauma surgeon, and have now been here at Medical University of South Carolina for the last few years as the vice chair of education and trauma surgeon. That's great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We're really excited to get your insight. Dr. Winfield? Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Rob Winfield, and I am a native of Illinois. I grew up in Florida, but I went to the University of Illinois and Southern Illinois University School of Medicine. I did my residency training in general surgery at the University of Florida. While I was there, I did a two-year NIH-sponsored research fellowship in uh, surgical oncology, interestingly enough. Um, I did uh, my clinical fellowship in uh, trauma and surgical critical care at the University of California in San Diego. And then my first faculty position was at Washington University in St. Louis. And uh, for the last seven years now, I've been at the University of Kansas Medical Center and the University of Kansas Health System, where I serve as the uh, chief of the Division of Acute Care Surgery, Trauma and Surgical Critical Care. Great. Well, thank you as well for joining us. I'm happy to have you at our institution too. So. Um, I'd like to get started with the first interview question. What does ACS fellowship mean to you specifically as well as your institution? Well, I'll tell you the College of Surgeons for me is about collaboration. Uh, it's networking, it's education, it's quality. Uh, it's a real resource and a driver for innovation uh, in, in new ways of doing things. Uh, so the college has really been on the forefront of, of all, all of the pillars that we need to treat our patients and do our jobs successfully. Yeah, for me, um, so I will just say that fellowship in the college, before I ever knew what that meant, what I noticed was that my surgeon role models all had FACS behind their MD. And so when I was a medical student, I wanted to know immediately what that was. I, all the surgeons had this, and I, I wanted to figure out what that was all about. And uh, fortunately enough, when I was a, a, a fourth year medical student, that was the first year that the, the college welcomed medical student members. And so I immediately lined up to do this because I said, okay, every surgeon has FACS, so I've got to do that. So FACS, first of all, just mean that that is what it, um, it means being a surgeon. It, it is something that, that uh, signifies you as a, uh, as a high functioning uh, uh, surgeon. Uh, beyond that, though, what the college has meant to me, at least over the course of my career to date, has really been opportunities for leadership. I think that there are, um, there are so many different pathways that people can take uh, within the American College of Surgeon Surgeons. I think it's very welcoming uh, to anyone who wants to get involved, and you can start that at a very early uh, stage in your career. And so that's the biggest thing I think of when I think of the college. Thank you both. Uh, our second question is, how has affiliation with the ACS affected your career path or helped you as a specialist? Yeah, and I think as Dr. Winfield was alluding to, the courses that the American College of Surgeons has are phenomenal. I started off as a resident taking an advanced trauma life support, uh, the ADAM course, the ASSET course, multiple courses from the Committee on Trauma for my career specialization. But then as a faculty member, they have really good leadership and development courses. Uh, for me, it was surgeons as educators, uh, and then taking more leadership positions, uh, taking the surgeons as, um, as leaders course. 
uh, these have been transformational, you know, learning and networking from leaders around the country. Uh, this is a resource that you just can't find anywhere else. I would echo everything that Dr. Talley just said. And I would say that uh, there is a huge networking component as well uh, to membership and then ultimately fellowship in the American College um, in that really starting at a, at a very, again, early career stage, getting involved in my state chapter, I started to get to know uh, who the surgeons were in our state. Um, and as I started to, to narrow my pathway into trauma and uh, acute care surgery, um, I get involved with the state COT, um, involved with the chapter activities related to the Committee on Trauma. And so that then opened all these different doors to other surgeons in other states and regions. And, and so you start building up these contacts over time. And um, ultimately, when you decide on your specialty, it, you, you get to have a pretty small group of people who end up being your peers. But you get a head start in getting to know all of those folks uh, by these networking opportunities again. And it, and it doesn't have to be uh, you know, attending the clinical Congress necessarily, right there in your state chapter, you have a very easy opportunity to get to know people who are prominent within your, uh, your chosen field and within your area. I think you make a great point too about not only the national ACS, but your local state chapters as well. So thank you for bringing that up. How have you guys championed ACS fellowship at your institution and within your own specialty? Yeah, and I'm going to extend again what Dr. Winfield said about the chapters. This is really where uh, I've been able to network with people throughout the state. And uh, now as uh, president-elect of our South Carolina chapter, I, I think this is where we can really make an impact uh, locally, right? We can get our residents and our, uh, fellow, our fellows, our peers to uh, the chapter meetings together and where we can really think about state solutions, state problems, state learning. All, all of this, I think, uh, really helps and promotes um, our institutional progress. Yeah, for me, um, in, a, in a leadership role in our institution, uh, I have ensured that all of my faculty who are eligible to become mm -hmm. fellows of the college become fellows of the college. Uh, for those who are not, I encourage them to join the Resident Associate Society until they are eligible. Um, that's been a, a big thing. I, I think. Um, anyone, anyone who's spent any time rounding with me or talking about uh, different, um, different opportunities that may be out there in terms of leadership and networking, uh, the college is always something that I push for our residents and students and um, sort of highlight the benefits of membership. Um, I have given grand rounds on the topic of fellowship and the uh, participation in um, uh, the college at both the local and state level and, and again at the national level. And in fact, uh, this Saturday is our state chapter meeting and I'm gonna be giving a similar presentation. Uh, really, it's, it's geared toward younger surgeons and, and, um, and surgeons in training uh, to say, look, there, there are pathways here for you to get involved. And you know, it's not this, this you know, big monolithic organization. There are ways that you tomorrow can, can uh, reach out to RAS or reach out to the YFA um, and you can immediately start to get involved in activities of the college and it all just builds from there. And so it's really exciting, I think. And, and so those are the things that I've tried to focus on. What would you tell your 20 year old self at the beginning of your career about fellowship in the ACS? <laughs> I wish I'd started earlier. You know, I started attending the clinical Congress when I was a resident, but at the time it just seemed like such a big thing. You know, there were uh, surgeons everywhere and I really didn't know what my part in this is, you know, and I, I also thought that uh, all these people are so much more important than I am, right? And if, if I haven't done big time research or written textbooks, then why would they care uh, my perspective? And I think I've been able to kind of debunk some of that and get involved a little later. Uh, but I do encourage, just like Dr. Winfield said, the residents, I wish I had been involved more as a resident member, as an associate fellow. I think that I would have reaped even more benefits from the College of Surgeons then. Yeah, for me, I'm a little older than Dr. Talley. And so um, going back to my 20 year old self, I think the first <laughs> thing I'd say is, Winfield, you're not going to be a pediatrician despite what you may <laughs> think right now. Um, so uh, beyond that though, I, you know, I think uh, again, if I were 20 years old and the option had existed, uh, to uh, be a medical student member of the college, I would have encouraged that as early as possible. And the other thing I would have, I would have told myself is there are, 
you can't even imagine how many doors this is going to open for you down the line uh, by getting involved early, by, by showing up, being enthusiastic, by sticking with it. Um, you know, th this can really change your career course. And, and, you know, ultimately that's kind of how it's, it's worked out for me in general, but I would have had an extra uh, seven years head start had I gotten, gotten going as a first year medical student. So that's, that's, I think, I think the advice that, 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 and, and again, just start moving away from pediatrics now. Thank you. I think that's great, great advice and why we're doing this interview series too, so that people know that they should get involved earlier and hopefully publicizing this will really help others. So what are three takeaways for our surgeon colleagues about how they can address their career path and membership in the American College of Surgeons? Well, let's see here. Um, the first for me would be to take advantage of the College of Surgeons resources. There are so many. Uh, many more than you could ever use. And I think you just have to uh, start to investigate them and take advantage. The second would be apply, right? Apply for grants, apply for positions. Uh, you, you just don't ever know until you, you stick a toe in, right? How uh, beneficial any of these things could be. You also don't know what the applicant pool is. You know, you assume that there's so many people that are more qualified than I, right? That's some of our imposter syndrome. I, I think you've got to just get out there and apply and to be a part of it. Um, the third thing is really that, you know, we're all the same. We're uh, all had the same pathway or similar. And so even the executive directors, the presidents, you know, they came through this, you know, in a similar way. And so I think that anybody, anybody can jump in there and, and really reap the benefits and contribute, potentially even steering the direction of the college. We all have a voice and we can use it. Yeah, I'd, I'd actually build on that last point that Dr. Tally made is one of my, my big three. And that is to say, um, if you look at people who, um, who have spent their careers uh, within the American College of Surgeons, the folks who have made the biggest impact, at least from what I've seen and kind of looking back through the history, is, uh, is people who came in who were really passionate about a topic. And it could be, yeah. it could be anything uh, within the field of surgery that they were super passionate about, about um, advancement of rural surgeons or uh, public health policy or, or different things like that. And you see that, that someone who comes into the American College of Surgeons, even if nobody's working on that thing at the time that they're thinking of it or that they're passionate about it, if you continue to stick with that, you will start to get to rally support. You continue to, to deliver a consistent message and you can do that. And so, so that's thing number one is bring your passion to the table and don't be discouraged if people don't immediately start to jump, jump to, uh, to what you're suggesting. It does take time. It takes time to, to kind of turn things. Uh, so that's thing one is, is bring your passion. Uh, second thing is bring that passion and get involved. So it's one thing to show up and, and tell everybody that you're really passionate about something, but if you disappear after the fact, um, it's not, it's not gonna go anywhere. Or somebody else might pick it up, but, but, uh, but in any event, stay, stay with it, you know, get, get involved. And, and that's the third piece is really staying involved. So you can kick something off, you can kind of get it going. And, and I promise you, there are plenty of motivated people that will take it and run with it. But if you stay involved, there is a long career of opportunities for you within the American College of Surgeons. And so that's really the third thing is to, is to stay with it, uh, whatever it is that you brought, continue to, to, to pursue that if you're passionate about it. And I think what, what I've seen increasingly from the college, particularly over the last decade, is, um, is you're starting to see different passions kind of get infused into what the college is. Uh, and, and sort of what, it, what it's like when you attend a meeting. And, and so I think that's really exciting and hopefully exciting for anyone who's considering a career in surgery or joining the American College of Surgeons. Great, thank you both so much. That was some great insight and we'll hopefully um, make one of, more of our members want to join the college, but also not even join, but get involved, like you said. Really get involved in things, stay passionate um, and continue to be involved. So thank you. Do you guys have any other comments that you'd like to tell our listeners? Oh gosh, I think uh, persistence is key though with anything that you wanna get involved in. Um, you know, it took me three years to get into the Surgeons as Educators course. Uh, you know, it, it took me two years to get into the YFA Governing Council. And, you know, what a great group, you know, 
And, and so I think, you know, stick your neck out there, you know, and do it a couple of times. I, I think it is um, uh, really an, a, a very cool uh, group of people. Uh, some of my best friends and colleagues have come from this organization. Yeah, I, um, I would just say, and this is what I'll tell our chapter meeting this weekend, is that um, if you do those three things that I mentioned, you're passionate, you get involved, and you stay involved, again, that, that there, there is an incredible opportunity for you there. If you keep showing up and you keep doing the work and you keep contributing to what the organization is doing as a whole, you're going to continue to get asked to do more and more things. You'll be, you'll be asked to continue to take on leadership responsibilities. And all of a sudden you look around and, and you'll be like, man, I know all these people and I'm getting to do all these cool things. And it's a wonderful feeling to, to be involved with a group like that, um, because you know at that point that you have contributed to the advancement of the entire field of surgery, not even just you know, your specialty, your training path, uh, those sorts of things, the entire field. And that's a really exciting and wonderful feeling to, to carry with you. That's great. Thank you both so much. We really appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy schedules. Um, and thank you. Thank, thank you for you. having us.